Welcome to the month of May at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. We're here in one of my favorite places in the entire world, the Indianapolis Motor Speedway Museum, here in the Sonax Detailing Bay. Right here is a VPJ from 1972, complete with the dihedral wings that didn't work very well. But one of the things that's so important about the Indianapolis 500, and in particular this place, the Indianapolis Motor Speedway Museum, is tradition. It's so important that they even have a exhibit based solely on traditions right now. One of the most important of those traditions though is the number 33. That stands for the 11 rows of three, the 33 starters that start the Indianapolis 500 each and every year. Well this year there was quite a bit of controversy and talk that hey maybe there won't be 33 this year. That has changed. There's a 33rd entry and we're about to talk to him. So there's been so much talk, so much speculation, but we have him here, the 33rd entry into the 2022 Indianapolis 500, Stefan Wilson. Stefan, uh, congratulations, number one. Tell me about your program and uh, how this all came together. Yeah, I mean, it, it, uh, it's definitely a relief to, to get it out there and get it announced and uh, become the 33rd entry. Um, just any entry, I just guess all I want to enter and be in the race. Um, you know, it's been a lot of work ever since the flag dropped on the 2021 Indy 500. It, you know, a mission to, to get back here, goal to get back to 500 again. Um, and, and really, work began June 1st, and it, it's been a, a roller coaster ride. You know, there's been so many times where, you know, it's, it gets close and you're missing one element. Um, and really, it's it's been a, a real challenge, but I'm actually really excited the way this has all come together. I think it's really it has a lot of um, potential to to go beyond just the 500 this year and grow much uh, go beyond that. So I think mean, that's what's exciting about it. You know, no doubt it's going to be a challenge, 11th hour entry. Um, I'm hoping that we can surprise a few people, but I think it, it's this is really the foundation uh, of something that's uh, hopefully going to grow uh, past the Indy 500. So you've got a lot of moving parts that have brought this team together. Tell me about Cusick Motorsports. Tell me about Dragon Speed. Tell me about all of the people that made this possible. Yeah, I mean, I, I can't thank uh, Don Cusick enough. You know, he's he's been uh, you know, kind of a, such a driving factor in all of this. His his commitment, he wants to be uh, involved in IndyCar, and, um, you know, he, he wants to be involved with me. So um, I can't thank him enough uh, for, for believing in me and trust him, trusting in me to, to, to push this forward and make this happen. Um, all the partners that uh, recommitted to me and, and our program, you know, uh, Connect Doc, uh, Sierra Pacific Windows, Neptune Systems, uh, that, that's just to name a few, Rain Nutrition. So yeah, thanks to all those guys for making it that all possible. Uh, Lola Sport will be back, Nolly Jerky. So um, from a partner side, we, we had that all kind of confirmed and locked up really early. Um, and then the other elements that really made this all possible was the partnership with Elton Julian and the Dragon Feed crew, um, and, and obviously with Team Chevy and then Ford Racing. So yeah, as you mentioned, there is a lot of different entities and a lot of moving pieces to make this all work. Um, really relieved it all came together. And I mean, you know, it, it's been a real, I'd like to say that I've, I've, you know, worked really hard to make this happen. And, and you know, at the same time, there's seven, se several other drivers out there that all worked equally as hard to make it happen as well. And, you know, it was uh, just, it was hard to really know where anyone was at because it was, it's all about kind of building that that having those building blocks of uh, the five elements, you've got to have the car, the crew, an engine, uh, the, the equipment, and then also the budget. And so it was really a case of trying to align all those different elements. And that's the reason why we're not at 35 cars or 36 cars or that is just, there, there's a shortage of at least one of those elements somewhere that's stopping that happen. You know, when you think about it in the kind of state of the world right now, you know, it's, uh, or, or the state of motorsport, there's so much interest in racing, motor, motor racing. There's so many different, like, 
you could name Ferrari Challenge, there's Porsche Carrera Cup, they're seeing fields, field sizes that, you know, 50, 60 car, you know, and then you've got the Road to India that's got so many different entries, you know, so many entries in those different series. So when you think about all the personnel that all those series have, have taken up, and even IndyCar at 27, 28 entries full time, you know, there, there's just um, the, the main, the most important resource is, is the crew and the personnel, skilled people to work on the Indy cars. And, um, you know, that was something that definitely held, held us back this year from seeing 34, 35 cars. So, um, yeah, we're just really relieved to get all those components together uh, and excited to see where this goes now. And I know I, I, I've, I've spoken to you quite a bit throughout this, uh, I guess we can call it an, an off-season for the Indy 500, um, and putting all these deals together. I know that you guys were very close, like you said, from, from really, really an early stage, but you guys were also very choosy in the program that you guys were willing to align with. Tell me a little bit about what made this particular partnership, this particular program, uh, worthy of, of you guys and, and your effort? Yeah, I, I think that we, we were pursuing, you know, a couple of entries out there. Some of them just didn't even materialize, you know, and, you know, but certainly the, the goal was to come back with Andretti um, after last year, but they, Honda has such a huge stable of cars now that they just weren't able to commit and add an entry or add an engine. Um, so that, that really held us back and stopped us being putting something together earlier. But in the end of the day, um, you know, this, what, what this really does is puts two like-minded people together. There's Don Cusick that has an ambition to be an IndyCar and also Elton Julian at Dragons, you know, and each, each of those individuals has components that can help each other and, and make that a reality. Um, so that's exciting for me. I think that, you know, for the prospect of seeing Don start a new team from scratch, um, you know, uh, that is that's going to take a lot of resources and a lot of time. Um, whereas now we can partner with Elton. He has similar ideas on how to grow this and move this forward. So that is what really made this appealing and really made it so this was something that we wanted to do. You know, I think if uh, if it didn't have that element, then we would have had to, you know, think a little bit more, you know, think a little bit more about it all, how this all came together. But I think those ingredients, and then obviously AJ Fort Racing, you know, there's a technical alliance there. We're using the car, so um, that's you know working with JR, working with Kyle and Dalton. That that's uh, going to be a a really good duo, a, a really good group of guys, group of drivers that we can work together and hopefully um, surprise a few people. Yeah, and I think certainly um, Dragon Speed, you know, I want to be positive about them. Uh, I know they really like it when I am. Um, the, you know, you look at their Indy 500 record and a lot of people doubted the first time they would come here that they would make the show. They made it on day one. Um as Elton has pointed out in the past, they really stepped up and, and helped in 2020 to fill the field in, a, in an incredibly difficult year. And they've managed to do that again with you guys. Um, I, I think you guys have a really capable package here, especially with that partnership with Chevrolet and AJ Foyt Racing providing the chassis. Uh, you mentioned the possibility of moving this program forward. Um, certainly, we know... Elton wants to be back full time. Certainly, Don wants to begin his own team and uh, take you to the IndyCar series uh, uh, for the long haul. Uh, I, I have to ask: Is is this something that uh, maybe we will see a little bit more, um, if not this year, maybe next year? Yeah, I think it's something that's on everyone's minds, and I think we have to kind of take take it one step at a time see how we all work together in the month of May and, and you know, just not not so much performance, you know, it's it's about how we all work together as a group. You know, is this gonna work? Is this dynamic gonna work between us all? Um, but I think that there is really nothing stopping us, um, you know, from this from this being the start of something great, you know? So 
I think if, if the month goes well, you, you could potentially see uh, Don and Elton purchasing a car together. And, and, you know, then once you own the car, that's something that we, are, we control our destiny a little bit about more than we did this time, you know? So um, I think that is something that's on, our, on their minds. And, you know, that, and then it's going to be a case of aligning partners to make it cost effective. And, you know, you know that's, that's ultimately going to drive how many races we do enter or, or, or if we just plan for the, for the next, uh, for next year's Indy 500 starting June 1st. So uh, there's definitely a lot of, a lot of different avenues for us to all go down. And it's just a case of, uh, you know, focusing on what's right ahead of us right now. And that's the Indy 500 and it's going to be here very, very quickly. Yeah, that's a great, I love that segue because that was my next question. Uh, as the 33rd entry, you are the only entry that is yet to test, yet to put a wheel onto the racetrack. You are an experienced driver with three prior starts. Certainly, AJ Foyt Racing knows how to get a car prepared. Certainly, Dragon Speed knows how to do that. And, of course, Don was a part of your team last year. Um, but is there a little bit of apprehension? Uh, you guys, you know, this is the beginning of May, and the thing has come together uh, this late. Uh, you know, do you have any kind of expectations for the month, or is it really just, you know, complete all 200 laps? Um, I think I'll I'll know expectation wise after the first couple of days, you know, where we where we really stack up. But uh, I'm not really daunted by the fact that we haven't turned the wheel yet. You know, there was the open test for you know Shaw, you know, set, you know, all 30, all all the other 32 entries definitely got some track time there. Um, but at the same time, it was the same situation that I was in last year. You know, and last year I'd, I'd been out of the car for three years, and not just out of an Indy car for three years or out of the Indy 500 three years out of a car and of anything three years you know so um and it's not for lack of trying it's not like i just sat on the couch um you know i was busy coaching paying the bills and you know at the same time was always pushing to try and make it back to the 500 so and that's what is is i'm so passionate about and um you know it was for for being free at three years out of the car out of an indy car and obviously the changes of the aero screen and the added weight um I, I think that the program last year was ran really well, and I, I got up to speed really quickly. Um, Fast Friday was the highlight. I wasn't able to, you know, complete that. And, and you know, Fast Friday we were top ten and, and no toast, so that was really strong for us. A really good showing. Uh, it was a hot conditions, and and that's that's where our car was running the best. And then on Saturday it cooled off, and we just missed the you know missed the uh, uh, balance a little bit and and really uh, you know didn't it wasn't able to to back that up you know when it mattered in qualifying so even though the results don't show it necessarily last year I think that it was a strong month for myself and for the for the group so you know I'm hoping I, I'm not daunted by the fact that we've missed some track time I think the experience I've had at Andretti Autosport you know the way I like to set up the car some of the changes that I like you know, I've, I've got those saved up in my head and, you know, there's definitely things that I want to be trying out and seeing if that works with the Foyt setup and how that how that uh, aligns with the rest of the team there. So, um, you know, fortunately, we've got teammates in Lyon, really good friends with JR. And, you know, he lives right here in Boulder, not too far from me. So, you know, we're already chatting about it. And, um, you know, I think that I've just got to focus on my own program and, and focus on what we control and, I think then expectations will kind of come up then and really right now it, it's the goal is just to, to to complete all 200 laps you know not put not make any mistakes and from there we'll see how things uh, shake up you know i think if i'm if i complete all 200 laps then we're in a good place so then we can you know compete you know compete towards the end of all right and we like to hear that uh stefan wilson Thank you so much for talking to us. Um, obviously, we will see you uh, in just a couple of days uh, when you make the trek from Colorado to the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Um, we're so excited and so happy for you, and uh, we'll talk soon. Yeah, thanks for all the support, guys. I really appreciate it. Thanks, David. So, the field is full. 
Stefan Wilson, Cusick Motorsports, and Dragon Speed will be the 33rd entrant for the 106th running of the Indianapolis 500. And the field is full. That's it. We did it. We got to 33. Amazing. Uh, hopefully next year, um, some of the issues that ultimately prevented a lot of the other teams from competing, such as engine shortages, chassis shortages, people shortages, will be sorted for next year so we can have a proper bump day once again because it's so important for the Indianapolis 500 and the fabric of this event that it is the fastest 33 starters. And you know what? Uh, you need the thrill of victory and also the agony of defeat, and not everyone who shows up should be making the Indianapolis 500. Um, but considering the circumstances this year, it's good that this thing got together, and obviously, I cannot wait for the Indianapolis 500. So, from the detailing bay here in, yes, it's the basement of the Indianapolis Motor Speedway Museum, this is David Land. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video, and it's May. We got a lot of content coming, so subscribe to see it all.